This video is an introductory video to the impacts of hurricanes. So let's jump on in and take a little bit of a look. Now, the first thing to note, although these are called hurricanes and we would normally call them uh, as hurricanes, they actually have different names in different parts of the world. This shows you the locations around the planet where these hurricanes and tropical storms can form. Here, when they form um, over the Atlantic, heading towards um, America here, they're called hurricanes, similarly off the west coast of kind of Central America. But come over here to the, the western part of the Pacific Ocean uh, and they're called typhoons. So if they hit Japan or in around about here, the Philippines are called typhoons. Come further down here to um, Australia and to Indian Ocean and they're called cyclones. They're exactly the same storms of Jeff different names that's all it's kind of like in the UK we walk in the pavement in America they walk in the sidewalk over here we put things in the boot of the car in America they put things in the trunk of the car it's the same thing but just different names so I'll probably interchange between these a little bit on the way through maybe hurricanes maybe typhoons as well because our case study that's coming up later will be typhoon Haiyan hitting the Philippines here same storms different names Let's take a quick look then at the anatomy of a hurricane. This is actually Typhoon Haiyan hitting the Philippines. And this is your classic shape of it. You can see the clouds from the satellite image and you can also see this feature in the middle. I wonder, do you know what that's called? Well, let's slice through this uh, typhoon and we'll have a look at this uh, from the side on view. Um, did you call this the eye? Absolutely it is. That's the eye of the storm. Actually, you'll get calm winds there, no cloud. Um, but to get the calm winds and no cloud, you've had to experience the worst and most devastating part of the hurricane. And that is the eye wall. Strongest winds, most intense rainfall. This is a beast of the part of the storm. You don't want to get it. As you move away from the centre of it, you'll gradually get the wind speeds um, and the amount of rainfall dying off a little bit and falling away but in around about the center either side of the eye and the eye wall it's absolutely devastating so what does it bring when you get a hurricane or typhoon heading over what are the impacts well there are three broad impacts that we're going to take a look at rainfall flooding storm surge and strong winds we're going to go through these one by one so let's jump all in in to the rainfall flooding first of all now, what I have to do um, is to create a bit of context for you here because the units that I'm going to show you for rainfall here are not exciting units. They're not kilometers, they're not you know, magnitude 8 on the Richter scale or anything exciting like that. The units of rainfall are, well, I wonder, can you remember right back to the start of this topic? They are millimeters. Yes, millimeters. Now, here's the thing. Anything that has the units of millimetres is never going to sound particularly impressive. So I need to set a bit of context for you here. Northern Ireland. We live in a pretty rainy place, don't we? I wonder what the average annual rainfall for Northern Ireland would be. Have you any idea in millimetres? Have a wee guess. Right, let's see if you're correct in your guess. Here is a chart showing the rainfall for some areas around Northern Ireland. Down at the bottom right here we've got Fermanagh out in the west uh, going all the way up to a thousand millimetres of rain and um, coming over here to Armagh closer to 800 millimetres of rain and Armagh and Lurgan have similar types of rainfall so maybe around about 800, 850 millimetres of rain in Lurgan per year. Now you've got to hold that in mind because that's going to be your yardstick to judge this against because when I show you these other figures you've got to ask yourself how big are they in comparison to what we get in Lurgan. Let's take a look at this map. This is the uh, western coast of the United States of America. You might recognize here Washington DC, uh, Philadelphia, some places that you might have heard of before. But this is the estimated forecast rainfall of a hurricane that was going to make landfall in around about this area. So I want us to look first of all at this place here around about Myrtle Beach because if we go from there and over to the scale we can see that Myrtle Beach is getting something in the region of between three and four hundred millimetres of rain. Three or four hundred millimetres. Again there's the millimetre thing it doesn't sound impressive but if you come over here to Armagh what I'm actually saying is this. This one area here Myrtle Beach will get about half 
will get about half of our annual rainfall in three days. Can I get a woe? No, I mean, really? Can I get a woe? Half our annual rainfall in three days. So when I say three to four hundred millimetres of rain, that's the kind of scale that you've got to get in your mind. This is a massive amount of rain. And what does it do? Let's have a look at this. Um, this is a map uh, of actually now down towards Texas in the Gulf of Mexico. And it shows you the flood depths of, of rainfall based flooding that happened whenever a hurricane came on land. These are flood depths in meters. Now, anytime you get a map like this and you're describing the distribution, you've got to say where is it and where isn't it. So pause the video for a moment and see if you can spot the pattern that is shown in this map. Well, what I'm hoping you noticed was that definitely, I'll turn my pointer on for this, definitely in and around about here, uh, at the coastal area you're getting more flooding, but there's a definite pattern here to the flooding as you go further on up. Those lines look remarkably um, familiar to you, I hope, because what are they? They are the drainage basins inland. So basically what is happening is the hurricane is approaching from the sea, it's making landfall and it's dumping a huge amount of rainfall. Remember, about half of our annual rainfall in three days. And it's dumping that down and it's falling into the rivers and it's causing flooding in around about these areas. And then the tributaries are joining more and more rivers, more and more water, more and more flooding. Until you get down here to the coastal areas in around about um, Port Arthur in this area. Look, you're getting between six and nine metres of flood occurring there. Now we're into meters, so that's a slightly more impressive unit. My classroom is about three meters high. So nine meters is the floor below me, my classroom and the floor above me. That's how much flooding. Now you can imagine the devastation that would cause to housing and to people that would live in that area. Here's a photograph. Clearly the flood water isn't quite as deep here, but you can see this flood water that has come in. Cars have been lost in it, um, there's damage to infrastructure, and uh, I just hope that guy has got some sure footing as he walks along that area. So there's your rainfall flooding. You can get up to uh, three to 400 millimetres in a few days, and that's a lot. The second one is your storm surge. Let's take a look at it. Now this little animated gif will need to, there we go from the start. Here comes the storm surge in to this house. And you can see here as this plays out, this vast quantity of water that's coming in. Now, this isn't rainwater this time. This is seawater. This is the sea coming inland. Now, you would be forgiven to think that I'm showing you a video here actually of a tsunami. It looks much, much more like that, doesn't it? It's not a tsunami. So don't get them confused. But it looks very, very similar. Because what you're basically getting here is the level of the ocean rising up and the sea coming in much, much further than normal. This GIF shows that whole notion. So it's not just bigger waves. You will get those. But the whole level of the sea is rising up as it comes further and further inland. Here's another video or GIF showing just that. Here's the level of the sea, this time looking out the window. And um, pretty you need to be pretty sure that your doors are waterproof or you've got them well sandbagged when that's happening. You can imagine that that's pretty scary. Uh, if you haven't evacuated by the time that this happens to you, you're stuck there. You better hope you've got an upstairs you can go to because very, very soon your house is going to get flooded. Dangerous Hurricane Michael continues to close in along the northern Gulf Coast. We do expect life-threatening and catastrophic storm surge flooding along with it. Now let's use these maps to show you how much water rise above normally dry ground you should prepare for. These maps made by the National Hurricane Center give us almost a block by block assessment of how much flooding to expect. For example, let's zoom in on Panama City, Panama City Beach, a very popular area of the Florida coast. These areas in yellow up to six feet of flooding above normally dry ground. This is going to flood businesses and homes and it's not just going to be at the beaches, it's going to be inland as well. Now let's go down the beach farther to areas near, for example, Port St. Joe. This is a very vulnerable area of the Florida coastline to storm surge flooding. We do expect significant flooding there downtown as well in areas in yellow and orange up to six and even nine feet of flooding above normally dry ground. 
So what does that look like? Well, let's show you. Imagine this, imagine three feet of storm surge right here. Now, if this amount of water catches you by surprise, it's too late to evacuate. Cars are floating around and floating away. There's large objects in here that could knock things down with a battering ram-like force. Now, there's no way, again, to evacuate with this kind of storm surge. But we know there's gonna be places with more than three feet. Imagine six feet of storm surge. Now, this completely floods out the first floors of homes and businesses, and the only way to escape that is to move to the higher floor of a building. Now, unfortunately, there are gonna be places that get more than six feet of storm surge flooding. Imagine this, nine feet and even beyond of flooding, of inundation. This is practically not survivable. So please, follow the advice of your local officials when they ask you to evacuate. And if you have any questions about what evacuation zone you're in, if you need to go and or where you need to go, go to floridadisaster.org. And by all means, everybody, please stay safe. So how does that um, occur? How does it actually happen? Well, let's take a look at this little diagram here. And this is the thing that you'll need to copy into your notes. What we have over here is your coastal area with your um, buildings and your palm trees because these tropical storms happen in, guess what, tropical areas. This is your average sea level. And typically, of course, this area, you build your house above the sea. Hmm, that's probably a smart thing to do. But what happens whenever the hurricane uh, comes over is this. The hurricane is a very, very intense low pressure system. Now, if you remember, pressure is the weight of the air. And if this is a very intense low pressure system, what you're basically doing is removing a lot of the weight that the air is pressing down on the ocean. And because you're removing that weight, the ocean expands upwards. Yes, there are waves, but this is more than just the waves that are being whipped up by the wind. The whole level of the ocean goes up. And because the whole level of the ocean goes up, you then get this inundation in these coastal areas like you've seen in those gifts that I showed you. So that's the bit that needs to be copied into your notes. Just pause here a wee second and copy that in. So that brings us then to the last of the hazards or the impacts of the strong winds. We've had the rainfall flooding between what and what millimetres did I say? Did you say it? Three and four hundred millimetres, which is about half the annual rainfall we get at Lurgan falling in two to three days. The storm surge can be two, three, four, five metres high, bringing in this devastation uh, from the coastline because the whole level of the ocean rises up. And then finally, we're into the strong winds. When it comes to hurricanes, each one's impacts are a little bit different, but the wind speeds that we talk about along the Saffir Simpson scale, those are very specific and the damage caused in those categories kind of predictable. So let me show you. Let's start off with a category one storm and the damage here, not too bad. A couple of shingles fall off. You can have some palm fronds bending in the wind, but everything basically remains intact. Category two, that's where you really start to feel it. Look at the windows of the house. They can be hit from debris from the outside and already start breaking in a category two. Your trees are significantly bent over in the wind and the siding of the house itself can break, flapping there in the wind, adding to those eerie noises inside. Category three, I've heard only a category three, but it's not only anything except really bad news. In a category three, you can have the door of the house blown in because the winds get so strong. You can have the roof of the house start to flap up and down in the wind because it can lift off those weak points and a lot of those trees start to fall. Category four, the damage is even worse. You get most trees falling, most of your windows breaking, most of your shingles fly away, and then Cat 5 is as high as the category scale goes. By Cat 5, no shingles remain anywhere nearby. The holes in the roof get so big that the walls of the house start to fall because they're not attached to anything anymore. There won't be any trees up in the neighborhood. That's just catastrophic damage. But again, that's just from the wind. And there are other impacts from hurricanes and they all vary through the season. 
So stick with the Weather Channel to keep you safe. The tropics head towards your neck of the woods. So the <laughs> pause this a wee second here, and we'll um, head back to the start of this. Uh, well, that out of the way for me here. This is a uh, typhoon. Uh, so this is a typhoon Hagibis, which struck um, Japan in around about, um, it was October 2019. And this is going to show you some of the impacts of these really, really strong winds. Um, a hurricane is defined as having wind speeds in excess of 74 miles per hour. That's a category one, but it can go way, way above that. Her, um, typhoon Hagibis was a very very intense storm so let's take a wee look at what these winds will do these are mostly shot by people just in their phones from their buildings as they observe these winds outside here we go oh goodbye to that roof and you'll notice that quite a bit the power lines getting hit even when you're inside you're not necessarily safe oh here comes the roof down from inside that public building well, what's going to happen here Whoa! the car's nearly over and there's another roof falling I reel on top of the cars down there below what's going to happen here and oh here we go here we go and oh yes it's a truck over no don't look out the window that's my advice to you because the debris might come straight to you and break your and the glass in your window there's the entire side of a house coming down now remember, this isn't an earthquake or anything like this. This is just the wind. Roof coming off, hitting the power lines. Oh my giddy aunt, what's going to happen? Oh, that was a very, very close call. What's going to happen here? Oh yes, that will be the shed on top of your house that's away. Mm -mm, not good. And this one, oh, it's got to be the crane, isn't it? Oh, boom, crashes into the side of the building. That never stood a chance. What's happening here? Oh, yep, there's another rooftop building away and power lines in the way down. <sighs> Watch this one here and there is the entire roof coming over and yes, yet more power lines coming down. And that's just something blowing down the street for effect. Really is absolutely incredible. So there we go. The impacts of the typhoons or hurricanes and um, whatever you call them, the impacts are the same. You get really, really intense rainfall. Can you remember the figures between what and what? Yeah, you know, three to four hundred millimeters typically. That's about how much? Yep, that'll be about half our annual rainfall in how many days? Two to three days. The storm surge again can be three, four meters caused by this um, level of the sea just lifting up because of the intense low pressure. And it's not just big waves that come in. The entire level of the sea can come in hundreds of meters, perhaps even a kilometer or two. Absolutely devastating. And then finally, your strong winds defined as wind speeds at least sustained wind speeds at 74 miles per hour, but can go well in excess of 100 miles per hour whenever you get into some of these really, really big storms. So whatever you call it, whether it's a typhoon or a hurricane, whenever one of these bad boys is coming for you, you're going to know all about it. And we're going to move on in the next video to take a look at the typhoon that brought the fastest ever recorded wind speeds to our planet. Typhoon Haiyan.